in fair. Yeah. I, my brother, my older brother, who attended this university, and I have always had very many arguments about which was the better university. My own alma mater, the University of Lagos, or Ufa, or back at my own university today. This morning, he called me and said to me that, well, you are going to Great Ufa today. You better heal us, Great Ufa. So I have healed Great Ufa, and uh, the thing is that I do so proudly because this is indeed a great university, a great citizen of I bring you the very warm felicitations of Mr. President to the graduates as well as to the university community on your sixth year anniversary. As you know, I am at his direction, standing in today as a visitor to the university. I also thank you for the kind invitation as special guest of honor today. The caliber of the honorary graduates at today's ceremony speaks to the high standards of Abafemi Aulo University. It speaks to the very high standards of the Abafemi Aulo University. And may I congratulate Kabiesi, the honorary officer, and it on Bosi, or Jaja the second. A man who has in a few short years redefined the exalted throne of the honor by deliberately by deliberately empowering the next generation and building bridges from the west to the east, from the north to the south, and serving our race with passion and zest. Also, to Chief Michael Adiojo, I say congratulations, sir for proving time and time again that you can do business honestly and fairly and still be wealthy and successful. And also, by establishing a university and several other altruistic deeds, you have clearly demonstrated that the real value of wealth or status is in the service that is rendered by such means to others. Healthy congratulations also to those being awarded the Doctor of Philosophy degree today. Congratulations indeed. I must also pause to celebrate my colleagues in academia, the great scholars and fine academics who make up the faculties here at the OAU. You are the thought leaders at the historic moment where you have the great task of guiding the present and inspiring the future. The convocation lecturer, my brother and friend, Arat Mouni, Olu Arutini, Akeid Olu, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, and Supreme Commander of Amotepo. <laughs> As I always describe him, a wealthy and successful lawyer and alumnus of this great university, he's given us much to ponder and reflect upon, and I salute you as always for such a thoughtful and insightful lecture. <laughs> and to the real reason why we are here, the graduates, congratulations to you, and of course all the family members and friends who are here to witness this great day. A diamond jubilee is certainly worth celebrating, and anyone who owns a diamond would take any opportunity to show off its strength and quality. For this university, the Obafemi Aulo University, and you'll permit me to refer to it occasionally as Ethan. There is much to show and many stories to tell. Stories of the institution itself and many of the incredible successes of its alumni. Stories of the triumphs of human endeavor, the primacy of ideas, the creative force of the introspective mind and the power of vision. For example, that Ife has one of the most beautiful campuses in Africa was, was a product of vision and the imagination of the legendary Professor Hezekiah 
I did that one long when we were coming. His colleagues and collaborators of that era. And he said, in, in an autobiography, Audacity on the Bound, written by Ambassador Olu Shanu, one of Nigeria's pioneer diplomats who studied at Harvard University around the same time as Professor Oluwa Fami, and who later became a professorial fellow here at the OE. He said, and I quote, the magnificent of Bafemi Aulo University was the toil and sweat of Hezekiah Oluwa Fami, end of quote. And I think it is fitting, and I think it is fitting indeed that the university library the symbol of learning is named after this great man. This university, OAU, is and continues to be very much a bastion of progressivism and innovation. And not surprisingly, you will find the phrase, a looter against all oppression, in the great Fair <laughs> This pro progressivism is evident in the outlook of staff and students alike including alumni who are governors, like my, uh, <laughs> like my learned brother. The great Ife Socialist School of Thought, the Ife Collective, is seminal thinkers like Sheikh Mwantoba, Tefondi Kweoli, Toyo Olorodi, Oladi Kofashima, Sheikh Mwandewoli, Gigi Dara, and others, who are here mutually reinforcing their counterparts at the Amadi Bello University. It was here at Ife that our chief of Bafemi Aolo, for many years chancellor of the university, gave some of the most memorable and consequential lectures on the political economy of Nigeria and addressed some of his most crucial problems, including the imperatives of democracy, national economic development, the ideology of government, and of course the famous national sense of freedom. It was while still teaching here that Professor Wale Tuenka won the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1986. <laughs> but perhaps it's less well known that he was also a lecturer at the University of Ibadan campus in the early 60s when he started his earliest skirmishes with state authorities. And it seems that Wale Tuenka attracted a new tribe of literary insurgents into Ife. Insurgents because they represented a more aggressive politically and socially conscious literati than their forebears at Ibadan at the time. I'm talking of the likes of Yodu Jeiko, Kole Omotosho, uh, Yemi Obubi, and again Gigi uh, Gigi Dar. Yemi Obubi and Yodu Jeiko and a few more left Ife and joined Alexiku and Stanley Matibo and Lade Bonola to radically and permanently change the face of print journalism in Nigeria with the establishment of the Guardian newspapers. But that was a generation of men who are now 70 years old and over. Now, several generations later, sitting in his hotel, his hostel room, here at the OE, Sheo Oshewa, then an undergraduate, developed a revolutionary journalism idea this time, technology-based, Naira Land, now possibly Africa's largest internet forum. Naira Land has 2.5. Naira Land has 2.5 million registered users, almost 10 times more readers than all Nigerian print newspapers put together. But talking about founding businesses in hostels, I'm sure we all know now, a multi-million dollar job website, Jobberman. It was founded also here at the OAU in 2009 by Olale Koyemide Ayodi Jadiwumi and Okoyemi Aoyemi. At the time, students of this university. It was here at Ipe also. In this place of deep culture, at the Oriolopo Acting Company was founded by Professor Olao Rutin from where the award-winning dramatic tragedy Kurumi and the gods are not to blame, hey! And from here also, held more recently. <laughs> and from here also, came more recently, the eloquent historical extortion 
a professor Tony Valera, who is currently at the University of Texas at, at Austin in the US. These pioneers and greats inspired a generation of artists that established Nigeria's primacy in the creative arts. Young artists trained at OAU are continuing in this strong literary tradition. Lagbajan, the iconic Marx musician, is also an Ife alumni whose father was supposed to hear. Dami Ajayi, who studied medicine here, but went on to co-found Saraba Magazine, a man of faith and up and coming poet, who is helping to promote reading culture through Bookathon, where members read at least five books a month. But the stories of Ife go beyond its history. Ife has always proved to be a place of cutting-edge innovation, and even more so, a place for the incubation of tomorrow's solution. In 1974, at a convocation ceremony held here at Ife, Tifaolo captured the centrality of man in the advancement of our world, when he famously said, and I quote, man is the sole dynamic in nature, and accordingly, every individual in Nigeria constitutes the supreme economic potential which this country possesses, end of quote. be proud. We must be proud of the far-sightedness of the faculties and management of this great citadel of learning. OAU was very much ahead of its time when it named its medical faculty, the faculty of health science, and its engineering faculty, the faculty of technology. The faculty of health sciences at Ipec was unique from the emphasis that it laid on community medicine and the attainment of a BSc in Health Sciences before proceeding to study for the medical degree of MBCHP. So not surprisingly, the university has produced top-notch researchers in several areas of medicine, but in particular in public health. I had the pleasure of meeting with Professor Adesu Yadai and Femi Babalola, both IFE alumni, when they undertook groundbreaking research and clinical trials into the potential use of ivermectin as a prophylactic and a cure for COVID-19. Professor Olui Inka Olutoe, another alumnus of the Faculty of Health Sciences, attained global recognition when he led a team of surgeons to success successfully take a 23-week-old baby out of her mother's womb, remove the tumor from the baby, and returned it to the mother's womb, where the injury where the injuries from her operation healed and she continued to grow until she was born the second time at 36 years. The Faculty of Technology was one of the first to, to include electronics in its electrical engineering program. And so not surprisingly, the early leaders in technology and tech enabled businesses were alumni of OIL Department of Electronics and Electrical Engineering. And of course, it was mentioned the likes of Shegu Ogusai, CEO of Airtel Africa, Kostis Anita Alumnus, Carl Toriola, CEO of MTN Nigeria, and another great IFA alumnus and product of this same department, uh, Professor Akita Akiwandi, who teaches today at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and one of the world's most respected professors of electrical engineering and computer science. And only last week, Another alumnus of the Electronics and Electrical Engineering Department of this university, Ms. Funke Opeke, made global investment news when Equity, the global conglomerate, announced that it was acquiring Main One, the company that Funke founded, for $320 million. Main One is West Africa's first privately owned open access undersea high capacity cable. It is 7,000 kilometer cable stretching from Portugal to West Africa with landings in Accra, in Dakar, in Abidjan, and Lagos. And I'm sure that the Department of Agricultural Economics must be wondering how I forgot to mention their two most celebra celebrated alumni, Dr. Akia Ambitioner, President of the Africa Development Bank, and winner of the World Food Prize, 
and Dr. O.K. Orama, President of Afro Zimba, who, of course, as you know, obtained his MSc and PhD here at OAU. So to the graduates today, you have some of the higher shoulders and the broader shoulders to stand on. But it is this generation that must deal with the biggest issues that confront the world and confront our nation. It is the big and innovative ideas that will solve these problems. You will have to confront the problems of climate change and the world moving away from fossil fuels. And you will usher in the age of renewable energy and green solutions. You will deal with the issues of feeding, education, providing healthcare and jobs for the fourth largest population in the world in a few years to come. We will need smarter agri solutions to feed this huge number. Technology is already helping to crowdfund agriculture and help more prolific citizens. Education needs hundreds of new solutions. We will not learn and teach in the old way in another few years. And we have to design ways of teaching millions even outside the classroom. And there are many young men and women already doing great things using technology to reach children in far-flung areas of our country. We will confront the need to vastly improve our public and clinical health care. We must build on the work of the Genomic Center at EDEC and the local vaccine production efforts going on and make local drugs and make drugs locally for hundreds of millions of Nigerians. The insecurity problems that we experience, the rise of terrorism in several parts of the country, this very large country, and the access to lethal weapons by non-state state actors tell us that we must be smarter in policing the country, using smart drones and surveillance equipment. The, the uh, politicization, if I may, of the importation of our militia tells us that we must manufacture our own arms. Proforce, the Nigerian company, led by Ola Obude, is manufacturing APC, somewhat personal carriers, and Emra in their factory in Udirena. And they're exporting already to several African countries. So are uh, Imperial, a company based in Kaduna, and the government-owned Daikon, producing different types of ammunition. The future is smart weapons benefiting from AI and machine learning. Yes, the challenges are huge, but I believe that you are well equipped to resolve them. And the evidence is here already. Since 2016, despite two recessions, young Nigerians have built six unicorns. A unicorn is a company that is valued at over a billion dollars. And there are already six established in this country since 2016. It was our who said, right here in Ife again, that it is effective economic planning and even more effective implementation that would enable us to avoid a disaster and reap phenomenal progress instead. And so our third national development plan, 2021 to 2025, is an attempt to chart a path for the future. The future belongs far more to you graduates, so you need to pay attention to it. One of the crafters of the plan, Ambassador Yemiti Kroos, who is here with me, the special advisor to the President of the Republic, is also alum an alumnus of, of IFEC, who and he lived in this campus all his life. His father, Mr. Shekondi Kroos of Desert Memory, was IFEC's first African librarian. The strategic objective of the National Development Plan includes establishing a strong foundation for a diversified economy, investing in critical infrastructure, in particular power and broadband, enabling human capital development, teaching staff, and improving governance and strengthening security. And its implementation is expected to be supported by a range of measures of fiscal, monetary, and trade measures. The plan emphasizes the creation of an average of five million jobs per annum during the period. In addition to job opening, it's also essential for Nigerian youth to acquire the skills and knowledge of the workplace. This is why we are working with the United Nations Development Program and the European Union and other partners on the Jubilee Spellers Program, which is a one-year work placement scheme for 20,000 young Nigerians annually 
over the next five years. It will be a big work placement to sharpen the skill of those who are coming out of school beginning uh, from the first quarter of next year. The National Development Plan focuses on vital addition across all sectors, including agriculture, manufacturing, solid mineral, digital services, tourism, hospitality, sports and entertainment. In agriculture, for example, equal attention is being given to primary production, as well as other aspects of the value chain, such as transportation, storage, processing, marketing and export. In a similar context, the plan places great emphasis on the export of goods and services, especially leveraging on the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. There are several, several different aspects of the plan, and I hope we'll get an opportunity to read them on the summary of it. So let me again congratulate the honorees and the graduates, and I pray that you individually will do much better than all your predecessors that we have mentioned here today. And to the University at 60. And to the University at 60. I pray that the next six years will be more fruitful, more fulfilling, and make this an even greater university. God bless your Buffett Aurora University. God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria.